Hello friends, today's topic for discussion is Anatomy of the Cubital Fossa. This is Dr. Yusuf signing from Al Jauf University. The specific objective related to this topic is only one that is identify the cubital fossa, name its boundaries and list its contents. So this is the only objective which is related to this topic. So this is the cubital fossa here. This is the position of the cubital fossa. So to describe the cubital fossa, it's a, a triangular depression which is present at the junction between the arm and the forearm or in the middle of the upper part of the anterior aspect of the forearm. So this is the forearm. So in the upper part of the uh, upper aspect of the forearm or you can say it is at the junction between the arm and forearm at the site of elbow joint in front of the elbow joint you can see. So this is the, the triangular depression which is present at the junction between the arm and forearm or in the middle part of the upper part of the anterior aspect of the forearm. So this is the cubital fossa. So this is very similar to that of uh, one more fossa which is present in the uh, lower limb between the thigh and the leg in the posterior aspect of the knee joint that is called as the popliteal fossa. So this is homologous with that of the popliteal fossa uh, which is present in the lower limb. So what are the boundaries of this fossa? This is a triangular fossa. So it has three boundaries. Uh, laterally we have the medial border of the brachioradialis. This is the brachioradialis muscle and this is the lateral aspect of it and this is the medial aspect. This is the medial border, medial border of the uh, brachioradialis. This is the cubital fossa. So this uh, medial border of the uh, brachioradialis will form the lateral boundary of the cubital fossa. Medially, so this, uh, the here on, on the other side is the medial boundary of the cubital fossa which is formed by the lateral border of the pronator teres. So this is the pronator teres muscle here. So the lateral border of the pronator teres muscle is this one and then the medial border is here. So the lateral border of the pronator teres will form the medial boundary for the cubital fossa. And the base is by an imaginary line. So there will be an imaginary line drawn from the one epicondyle of the humerus to the epi, uh, second epicondyle that is from the lateral epicondyle to the medial epicondyle. So it is an imaginary line. So there are two muscles on either side and the base is formed by the imaginary line drawn between the two epicondyles of the humerus. So this forms a triangular uh, uh, structure that is called as uh, the cubital fossa. And the apex is directed towards the uh, 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 hand. So here we leave the apex. So it is a triangular boundary. This is the base and this will be the apex. So here we leave the apex. It is directed distally and is formed by the junction of the two muscles that is the brachioradialis as well as the pronator teres. So they join at a particular point. This form the apex of the uh, cubital fossa. So because uh, it is triangle, so it has a base as well as an apex. So this is how it looks like. So this is a triangular boundary. This is the cubital fossa. Laterally we have the brachioradialis to be simple and the medial side we have the pronator teres and the base is from an imaginary line drawn from the uh, lateral epicondyle to the medial epicondyle. So this form the, the triangle. So now coming to the roof of this triangle. So roof is formed by the skin, the superficial fascia as well as the deep fascia but there are some important structure within uh, the superficial fascia after you reflect the skin. So in the superficial fascia one important vein you can see here this is called as uh, the median cubital vein. Median cubital vein. So this is a very important vein uh, which will be connecting the basalic vein on the medial side with the cephalic vein on the lateral side. So this is a very important vein uh, which is between the uh, basalic as well as the cephalic vein okay which is in the uh, cubital fossa. The second important structure is the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. This is nothing but the continuation of the musculocutaneous nerve in the arm we have studied. So that continuous same thing musculocutaneous nerve of the arm will continue as the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. So it becomes cutaneous and it supplies the skin of the forearm. Then 
on the medial side we have one more structure this is called as the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm so these are some of the structures which are present within the superficial fascia then deep to that will be the day fascia as well as the bicepital aponeurosis we have seen that the insertion of the biceps is into is into the radial tuberosity that is by tendinous inter uh, by the tendon then uh, there is a uh, aponeurosis which spreads within the deep fascia so this is the other part of the uh, the insertion of this uh, biceps brachii so this is the bi biceptal aponeurosis which uh, uh, spreads it itself into the and get inserted to the deep fascia that is the biceptal aponeurosis so these are some of the structures which form the roof here also you can see here this is the same thing biceptal aponeurosis this is the biceps brachii so the insertion is by a tendon which is into the radial tuberosity and the other part will be become aponeurosis which will be inserted not to a bone but it spreads within the modified deep fascia and this is called as the biceptal aponeurosis so this is also a component of the deep fascia so in the skin after the skin is reflected in the superficial fascia we can see the medial cuboidal vein then the lateral cuteness nerve of the forearm as well as medial cuteness nerve of forearm then in the deep fascia uh, we can uh, trace the uh, the biceptal aponeurosis this all structures will form the roof of this cubital fossa coming to the floor floor is formed by the one more muscle of the arm that is the brachialis so we have studied the brachialis also in the arm so which will be inserted to the the uh, ulnar tuberosity so this is the ulna bone and it is getting inserted to the ulnar tuberosity so this is the brachialis muscle which form the floor this is a side view after taking a section at the elbow joint so you can see here this here will be the roof and here will be the floor so floor one structure is formed by the brachialis the other muscle is the supinator muscle this is a uh, muscle of the forearm in the extensor compartment you can see a small muscle this is called as the supinator so these two structures will form the floor here is the the brachialis and the, the muscle is the supinator which form the floor of the cubital fossa and here are the structures which are uh, within the cubital fossa okay coming to the contents so what are the contents uh, contents before we go into the contents this is a very small uh, uh, triangle uh, so if you want to see the contents the boundaries have to be retracted sidewards so that you can see because if not it is a very small uh, fossa cubital fossa is a very small fossa and if you want to trace uh, the contents it has to be retracted why the cubital fossa is straight because of the content because there are very important structures which you can trace here so because of that you study the cubital fossa though one of the important content is the a very important nerve which is called as the median nerve so this is the median nerve which is the nerve of the forearm as well as the hand so a very important nerve is passing here this is called as the median nerve which is a very important content of the uh, the cubital fossa the second important uh, structure is the termination of the brachial artery if you can see here this is the brachial artery which terminates into two important branches one is called as the radial artery the second is the ulnar artery so these are the two uh, branches of the brachial artery which are the main arteries which are supplying supplying the uh, the forearm as well as the hand so these are the terminal branches of the brachial artery brachial artery is the artery of the arm then also you can see the tendon of the biceps uh, with the biceptal aponeurosis we have already seen the biceptal aponeurosis in the roof and one of the content is the the other tendon of the uh, biceps uh, that is the this is called as the the tendon of the biceps brachii which will be going and getting inserted to the radial tuberosity the fourth important structure is the radial nerve itself we have seen in the arm that the radial nerve will be passing through the radial groove and it grooves uh, the uh, humerus and then it uh, comes in the front okay so this is here it is coming in the front after passing through radial groove and thus and then it enters the cubital fossa so so one of the uh, uh, structures which is on the lateral side is the radial nerve 
okay so these are some of the important contents which are present in the uh, the uh, of the in the cubital fossa from medial to lateral side the first structure will be the median nerve the second is the brachial artery along with its two terminal branches radial as well as the ulnar artery then the third content is the tendon of the biceps brachii and the fourth is the radial nerve and its branches so all the structures can be again seen here here in this picture all the uh, boundaries have been uh, reflected so that you can see the content coming from medial to lateral side this is the median nerve then this is the brachial artery with its two terminal branches radial and ulnar artery then you can see the uh, biceps brachii tendon as well as on the lateral side we have the radial nerve so these are the four important contents of the cubita fossa what is the importance of these uh, contents uh, coming to the clinical aspects or the applied aspects or the applied anatomy um, of this cubital fossa, one of the very important structure which we have seen in the uh, superficial fascia is the median cubital vein. What is the importance of this? This is a very important vein, a very stable vein which is used for the intravenous injections. So whenever you want to give some intravenous injections uh, or if you want to draw blood, this is a very uh, promising vein. Uh, because of its connection on either side one side it is uh, 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 held by the the uh, the uh, the, uh, the cephalic vein and on the other side is the basalic vein so both these veins are pulling it from either side so this vein is much more uh, stable in its position so it is much more easy for intravenous injections as well as to draw blood Okay, so this is a very important vein which will be present here in the cubital fossa uh, which we have uh, studied. This is the medial cubital vein. The second important uh, aspect of this cubital fossa is measuring of the blood pressure. If you can see here, so this is how the uh, blood pressure is measured by applying the cuff on the arm and just below that you try to auscultate the brachial artery before its division into radian and ulnar artery, you auscultate. Uh, the uh, the brachial artery and this is in the cubital fossa or just above the cubital fossa so there is the site a very important site where you can put the stethoscope and try to auscultate the brachial the uh, the sounds of the brachial artery and try to uh, measure the blood pressure so there is a very important uh, area for the uh, measurement of the blood pressure to auscultate the brachial artery and measuring of the uh, blood pressure. So uh, blood pressure monitoring is a very important component of this cubital fossa. The third important uh, uh, clinical aspect of this region is especially if there are any fractures in this region usually it will be supracondylar fractures of the humerus and here if you want to trace the fractured component it will be usually present in the within the cubital fossa so um, this is the third important uh, applied aspect and whenever there is uh, supracondylar fractures then it can apply um, that uh, the fractured bony part might uh, uh, be applying some pressure on the important structures here in the cubital fossa and sometimes it can ensure so they are very important structures like the median nerve is there which i said is the nerve of the arm and uh, the forearm and as well as the hand and the second nerve is the radial nerve which is also an important nerve with which is will be supplying the extensor compartment of the uh, forearm as well as uh, already we have seen the arm but it will not affect the arm here if it is uh, compressed here it will be affecting the forearm as well as the the hand that uh, uh, along with that a very important artery which is present here which can be injured will be the brachial artery and two terminal branches radial and ulnar artery so that's why supracondylar fractures of the humerus are very important also so these are some of the applied aspects or clinical aspects uh, uh, of this region and why we should study this cubital fossa and its content so you should know uh, one is the the boundaries of the cubital fossa then you should know the roof then the floor as well as the most important component is the contents so there are four important contents going from medial to lateral side medially we have the median nerve then we have the the brachial artery and its two terminal branches and then we have the the uh, biceps tendon then the fourth which is most lateral will be the radial nerve so here you can see again all the structures one by one one the most medial with the median nerve then we have the brachial artery which is passing then we have the biceps tendon 
and the most lateral will be the uh, here uh, they have not shown here that will be the uh, the radial nerve so this is the cutaneous nerve which is present in the form which will be usually in the superficial fascia so here also can again see the all the uh, structures have been retracted uh, you can see here uh, the two important boundaries one is the pronate arteries and the other is the on the uh, lateral side will be the brachioradialis muscle and here will be the imaginary line and the structures from medial to lateral side are the median nerve brachial artery and two terminal branches then we have the biceps tendon and the most lateral will be the radial nerve which is shown here so if you have any doubts regarding this you can definitely uh, uh, write and inshallah will try to answer these are my references thank you thank you very much